In today's video, I'm going to build the 135M4A1 Sherman by Italeri. Hey, what's up guys? Really happy to be back for another video. Uh, today it's going to be uh, kind of a, a medium length uh, video. Uh, basically, we're just going to build uh, the uh, 135 uh, M4A1 Sherman by Italeri. So it's going to be a really simple video, but uh, I know that uh, you guys enjoy uh, watching me build some, uh, some model. So... Um, so yeah, it's going to be a really nice uh, video. Like uh, almost every build that I do, I'm always starting with the wheels. I don't know why, but that's the way it is. So just a little bit of sanding, removing all the, the rough spot, and uh, building uh, the, um, the, wheel, uh, the wheels uh, spring and things like that. So now uh, same thing with the sprocket and different, uh, different part like that. It's a really, <clears throat> really nice and really easy build. Uh, so it's Italeri normally. It's it's not that good, but uh, this one I will say that it's really, really nice. Again, if you want to subscribe to my channel, I will be really pleased. And just not forget to hit the the bell icon to see future uh, video. Like I said, it's a pretty straightforward build, uh, like uh, like all the other one. This kit, uh, what I like is, it comes with eight different characters. So I'm gonna use this kit to build um, a really nice diorama in uh, late 1945. So it's gonna be around April 1945 in Italy. So um, that's the goal of uh, building this uh, this Sherman. Now it's time to add some cast uh, steel armor uh, texture for our um, our Sherman. So there's two products you we, you can use. It's the Vallejo plastic putty or the Tamiya uh, putty. I will do the um, the uh, Vallejo plastic putty in this case because the smell uh, of Tamiya is really really strong. So. Uh, but it's the same kind of texture, so why don't you use Vallejo since uh, it's not smelling like crazy? So um, so just mix it with uh, just a, a little bit of water uh, to make uh, the consistency, consistency. Wow, that's a pretty hard word to say for me because I'm a French guy. So consistency um, of, uh, of the texture, so it will be a lot easier if you're uh, using water. Um, so you just apply it uh, on the part you really want to have some uh, some uh, cast uh, cast texture. So uh, it's gonna be on the lower roll and uh, on the on the the other side. So you just apply it like randomly with um, with a really old brush that you probably already have in hand. So um, just apply it. Um, I would say. Kind of a thin layer but uh all around after that i'm gonna use the um the other brush to uh make sure that uh, i will have kind of a, a thinner cast texture and to make sure that it's gonna be even um all over my model so i want to be gentle with it so the first step like you saw it's to uh apply the paste and after that just do some uh some kind of a small dots with uh Another, I would say, rigid brush. Um, it's gonna be a lot easier, and uh, it's gonna it's gonna save you uh, uh, sometimes for sure. It's a pretty straightforward technique, and uh, there's a lot of my uh, my uh, fellow YouTubers that already use it. But I'm using this kind of texture, and for years now. So after it's uh, fully dry, you're just gonna use some. Uh, uh, in this case, I'm using 3000 uh, grit uh, sandpaper from uh, from Tamiya. 
it's kind of a sponge so I just uh, glued it on uh, on a piece uh, of um, of wood uh, it's gonna be a lot easier because I just uh, cut a really small rectangle and you just uh, sand it uh, your model uh, all over the place to make sure that you don't have uh, any chunk of uh, casting texture that uh, pops out of the model so it's only to uh, to make sure that uh, everything's gonna be even but without uh, removing your your casting texture because it's a 3000 grit so it's really fine so like usual I'm always changing the uh, the towing cable um, for whatever reason this one is in total total plastic so I'm just gonna use the um, the edges of uh, what comes with the kit and I'm just gonna replace it uh, with um, a regular rope that uh, I had in uh, um, another kit so um, the detail will be a lot better so continuing uh, with the turrets um, basically it's the same method the same kind of thing uh, the turret uh, in this case we're just gonna apply it almost everywhere so it's um, the have casting um, the have casting all over the place to protect the turret because uh, a lot of the time there's some um, there's some people uh, mounted on the turret or, or sit down or things like that so it's it's only a matter of uh, protecting uh, the soldier that uh, are using the tank so um, they always have uh, a cast uh, steel armor texture um, all over the turret so like I said we're using the same kind of technique just do some uh, some stippling I would say uh, the stippling is to uh, I would say thin down a little bit uh, of uh, the, um, the the large layer that we apply so the same kind of thing you just apply it randomly uh, not too much but not too thin just make sure that you have uh, product all over the place and finish it by uh, by stippling with uh, with I would say a hard brush or um, um, a harder brush so it's uh, it's the same method uh, that you did on the uh, the regular uh, regular tank so that's the final uh, the final um, result so it's a really nice result when you paint it uh, it's gonna come uh, really alive so the next video I will be painting and weathering this uh, this really uh, awesome bad boy I really enjoy building Sherman tank so it's probably one of my favorite tank to build um, the one last step that I did is I took some stowage that I already have uh, in the 135th scale uh, to apply it uh, all around uh, the the model and also use some uh, some uh, ration cartoons that uh, I have so um, it's gonna be a really nice uh, finishing model so see you in the next video with the painting and the weathering